Hi, greetings for the day. My name is Anil Kumar Paspalati. I am from University of Hyderabad, Hyderabad, India. I thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity. The crux of research in my laboratory is to investigate the pathogenesis of diabetic nephropathy and related complications. The title of my talk is Human Growth Hormone Induces Mitotic Catastrophe of Glomerular Protocytes and its Implications in Proteinuria. Kidney regulates homeostasis of the body. Nephron is a major portion of the kidney that helps the kidney to regulate the homeostasis. The glomerular portion of the nephron is the principal uh, portion where major job of the kidney operates. The glomerular is uh, nothing but uh, it's a tough, tough, uh, fine capillaries, and they are covered by the a fine layer of the cells known as protocytes. These protocytes are terminally differentiated visceral epithelial cells, and these cells, uh, if undergoes injury, they cannot be replaced by the fresh cells. So the, the blood, uh, whatever it contains, like a small solutes, amino acids, proteins, all the things has to be uh, has to be subject to the filtration. But however, small molecules such as water, glucose, amino acids, urea, they all be filtered through the fine slits of the podocytes. Uh, if you could see here uh, uh, in this uh, in the C image, you could see that there is a, there is a filtration uh, space is there and they will all be filtered. And uh, uh, I provide you to the transmission electron microscope image here, uh, which is done by in my laboratory, where you could see that you know, the protocytes, uh, they have the uh, foot process, and between the foot process, there's something fine hair-like structure is called, that is called slit diaphragm. So small molecules all pass through this one into the urinary space. There are large molecules such as the proteins, they will be retained back. That is how the kidney serves as a a permeability barrier for the large molecules and essentially the kidney function is represented by the protocytes. So protocytes are targets of uh, uh, damage in the diabetic nephropathy. As protocytes undergo injury, they cannot uh, help the kidneys to filter in uh, uh, the filter in the proteins and filter out the small molecules. Protocytes uh, cannot uh, do its normal functions, so a lot of amount of the protein goes out of the kidney. And in all these factors, you could call as a uh, and as, as a big uh, the complication known as a diabetic nephropathy. Now, significant amount of the people with the diabetes they are being affected by the diabetic nephropathy. In the diabetic nephropathy, there are some kind of molecules such as the glucose, growth hormone, which is the endocrine factor, and the conditions such as a hypoxia, hypertension, they are prevail. Among them, uh, glucose and you know growth hormone, uh, they are of great interest to our laboratory uh, in general to the, to the most of the renal researchers. So in diabetes, when there is no insulin, uh, growth hormone levels are secreted uh, by the antiripitary in, in, in a great significant manner. Normally, glu glucose, uh, sorry, uh, normally insulin uh, suppresses the growth hormone secretion. But when insulin levels are not there in the diabetes, the growth hormone levels are shoots up by feedback regulation. For a very long time, this growth hormone, which is secreted by the anterior lobe of the pituitary, it is considered as a uh, service for the uh, postnatal growth of the somatic growth of the person. So, and it's 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 uh, it's actions in different tissues such as uh, liver, bone, fat, and muscle, which are, which are known as the canonical targets. And this research uh, has been like you no, know, uh, they've done for the decades. But however, in the recent past, uh, non-canonical targets of the growth hormone have identified such as uh, 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 cardiomyocytes in the heart and the brain, gut and the kidney. The, the, the renal cells, particularly the podocytes, were shown to be a target of growth hormone action by my external laboratory. There and then I started, uh, I got an interest in understanding the growth hormone sold in the podocytes in general and the kidney in detail. Uh, uh, and when I started my laboratory at University of Hyderabad, India, I started working on this, uh, the growth hormone, how it uh, implicates in a chronic kidney disease. As I just said, uh, it's, it's science is uh, uh, this field is budding, so lot not much literature was there and how growth hormone uh, implicates in protocytes. So what I did was uh, uh, I got these uh, human protocytes from Professor Moin Sali from University of Bristol. Uh, there we did unbiased microarray. So when we did microarray, we found that uh, regulation of upregulation of notch one 
uh, then notch one targets HES1, HES2, they were upregulated uh, in this uh, human podocytes when subjected to, to the uh, treated when exposed to the growth hormone for 30 minutes. Uh, why we choose 30 minutes? Because it will reflect the direct uh, uh, targets of the growth hormone. If you delay, what happens is you, know, you can get the later uh, or secondary uh, gene responses. So what are other ways to be made in microarray with human podocytes? We want to see whether it has any implications to the diabetic nephropathy patients. So we got uh, uh, one uh, like open source database from the University of Michigan. Then we searched their mining. We did the mining for this open database. And before there also uh, Notch1 and its target uh, HES1 and its like and JAG1 were induced in diabetic nephropathy, the kidney uh, specimens. So this Notch pathway usually uh, it is uh, switched off in, uh, in adult podocytes. So notch pathway, uh, it is uh, to be active the notch pathway, signal sending cells come in contact with signal receiving cell and signal sending cells, it's, um, it's ligand interact with the notch receptor and signal receiving cell. What happens, you know, this receptor undergoes some kind of conformational change and receptors intracellular domain will be cleaved uh, from the notch, uh, from the notch portion. So this notch intracellular domain, popularly known as NICD, uh, it will it will enter into the nucleus and binds with the cognitive sites of the DNA and it acts as a transmission factor. Since we observed the activation of notch components or notch genes in microarray, and we found that the activation of the notch components in diabetic nephropathy kidney patients, we would like to demonstrate that whether these notch pathway is active in growth hormone treated protocytes. So what we did, we did immunized to uh, staining for the NSCD1 and JAG1 and uh, uh, it's a uh, downstream target has spawned. So in the, clearly you could see that, you know, in growth hormone uh, treated samples, you could see the upregulation of all of these three things. Uh, so simultaneously in our laboratory, uh, we were interested in understanding the secretome aspects of the protocytes. The secretome, that means um, what, whenever we treat with the growth hormone or any other, uh, any other uh, uh, components that really damage the kidney, what happens, we collect the conditional medium. So that means spent medium, we subject to the mass spec analysis. So here we did with, when we treated with the growth hormone, we took the conditional medium from the both control and growth hormone treated protocytes, subjected to the LCMS, MS. And interestingly, we found that induction of TJ beta uh, in, the, in the secretome. We reconfirmed the secretion of the TJ beta by the growth hormone treatment by performing ELISA uh, of the conditional medium. We found that you know there's induction of uh, TJ beta, uh, significant index TJ beta uh, in, in the conditional medium. You could see in the B. Uh, then we, when we treated these podocytes uh, along with the uh, growth hormone and also with the uh, uh, jack growth hormone uh, jack uh, jack to inhibitor the like kg490t that means when we block the growth hormone downstream pathway we could able to prevent the growth hormone uh, we were able to prevent the tj beta secretion by the growth hormone so that's you could see when in ag490 for, treatment which is jack to inhibitor even though there is a growth hormone uh, the tj beta levels were called comparable with control uh, during this time, we did the pathway enrichment. Very interestingly, the pathway enrichment of this all LCMS MS peptides that revealed that there is activation of notch pathway uh, in addition to the cytokine cytokine receptor interaction, the TJ beta cytokine uh, activator. When we treated the cells, uh, what interesting thing what we found was uh, the, when compared to control cells, growth hormone cells showed more than one nuclei. Um, this is very, like, you know, very interesting observation for our very, we were very excited at that time. And also there was a literacy that cross talk between notch and TJ beta signaling pathway. So what we did was um, to, to see the two nucleus in, uh, in, in, in a terminally differentiated epithelial cells, that's what I'm saying, podocytes are terminally differentiated cells and they're in a G0 senescence, G0 slash G1 senescence. But we, we found that in you know, a significant number of cells, we found that there's more than one nucleus there. So that obviously it will only explain when cells are, uh, cells are proliferating. So what we did was, you know, um, we measured the content of the DNA uh, in control and growth hormone treatment cells along with the inhibitor for JAK2. So what interesting what I noticed was, as we explained before, most of the control cells were in G G1, G G1 stage, but in growth hormone TJ beta, significant portion of cells were are uh, in a S phase and also GTM phase. If you could, if you could see very closely in the case of the figure B, you could see there are some cells are produce more and more, more, and more DNA content, even it is like a four N. So it suggests that with the treatment with the growth hormone TJ beta, the protocytes are under uh, underway proliferation, and the proliferation is inhibited uh, when we added these cells with the uh, uh, inhibitor for JAK2. That's actually that prevents growth hormone signaling. 
So since uh, we noted, we are claiming that the cells are proliferating when we treated with the growth hormone TG beta, uh, it is the data is supported by observation of K67, which is a marker for proliferation in the protocytes. You could see that there's in the, C, in the figure C, there's induction of uh, K67. So we would like to demonstrate uh, by Western immunoblotting uh, the activation of you know cell cycle entry by using the S phase marker PCNA by using M phase marker cycling B1 and also as we notice the GTM uh, stage more number of cells are accumulated in the, in the facts analysis we also use it the uh, the markers for uh, a GTM phase so if you could see the western plot in the in the if you see the selectively the TJ beta one and growth hormone you could see the induction of CGD, CDK4, cyclin D1, PCNA, and activation of P53 and P22, which are nothing but the GTM phase, uh, GTM, GTM phase uh, uh, checkpoint markers. Uh, when we treated these cells uh, along with this uh, either growth hormone TJ beta with the AG, which is a blocker for JAK2, SB, which is a which is inhibitor for TJ beta receptor, and DAPT. DAPT is an inhibitor for the enzyme gamma secretase. That means nothing but it is inhibitor for activation of notch. So DAPT prevents notch blocking. So whenever we use this inhibitor, there is no uh, proliferation uh, of uh, these protocytes. It strongly suggests that the growth hormones are under proliferation uh, selectively by growth hormone. Uh, and R by TJ beta. So uh, we next uh, we next understood what are these implications of uh, selective expression of uh, GTM phase markers. Even though we could see the cells are proliferating, but we never see the daughter cells, two daughter cells. So uh, if, you, if you see very closely here, I mean, compared to the control, which has a, like a phalloidin staining, uh, like, you know, see the panel A phalloidin staining, there are three cells are there. You could see the DAPI three nuclei are there, which are individual cells. But in case of growth hormone TJ beta, you could see the more than one nuclei is there and cell is, en cell is enlarged. Uh, and with case of, as, as I explained before, we use a naturally beta DAPT or, you know, SP, which is TJ beta receptor inhibitor, or we could, uh, we could use AG, jack inhibitor. We could not see the the binuclein in, in, in a protocytes. Uh, when we stand for the tubulin, which is a tubulin, essentially the you know like uh, uh, the chromosomes are separating. You know the we can we could, we could see the chromosome separation during the metaphase or anaphase using the staining of the tubulin. We could see the very clearly the the, the splinters are formed and you know the, the chromosome content is like trying to move towards the poles uh, of uh, photocytes in case of growth hormone TJ beta. So what we noticed was here. The cells are trying. So there is a karyokinase that means nuclear division is there, and you know the 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 the, the daughter uh, chromosomes are trying to separate out, but they're not completely uh, completely you know uh, separated out to form a uh, to form a two new daughter cells. As we could see, the percentage of binucleate protocytes are more in growth hormone TJ beta, and also some more number of protocytes are accumulated in our phase selected in the growth hormone TJ beta condition. So what we noticed was. And we probed for actually, we probed for it, any, anything DNA damage was there. So KU18, RAD, T, and you know, H2A, these are the markers for uh, DNA damage and DNA repair. So we probed, we probed for you know, these markers in the Western blood and we found that uh, these uh, DNA damage markers were upregulated uh, in growth hormone TJ beta. And we could see very sparingly in, in all the treatments in the, wherever, wherever we use the inhibitors. Then, the, there is a there is a very key molecule that supports the cytokinesis, so, you know, separation of uh, so separation of daughter cells by 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 regulating at uh, the furrow. The two the daughter cells separating. The cleavage furrow is regulated. Uh, formation of cleavage furrow is regulated by rho A. We could see rho A is very very upregulated, very much in growth hormone treatment. But but what we noticed was, but rho A was not there exactly. They're supposed to be. There's a mislocalization of rho A. Rho A should be at as I said, it's a furrow, like you no know, to to get the cleavage furrow. But it is not there. That was we noticed it. Then, since you know, we observed that there is a there is a site there is a karyokinesis that means nuclear division. The chromosomes are uh, chromosomes are you know synthesized. They are paired up. They are trying to put towards the poles, but there is no cytokinesis happening. So this kind of stress condition, uh, failure of the connection between karyokinesis for the cytokinesis could possibly evoke the cell death. So that's why we probed for the apoptotic markers such as the PARP, cleaver caspase 3, and the BAGS. We could significantly, uh, we found that there is significant induction of the PARP and all these apoptotic markers. 
we confirm we confirm the, uh, the induction of paper process in growth hormone treatment or intensive treatment by performing tax analysis see the, in the in the in the q4 uh, quarter 4 you could see that in the control the only 1.6 percent of the cells uh, were apoptotic but in case of growth hormone uh, 37 point cells and in the case of the tg beta there is almost 44 percent of the cells are apoptotic we strongly suggest that when we treat the growth hormone the sleeping cell are nothing but you know is it, is it, can, uh, cells are in you know like for instance uh, cells which are stuck at the g0 genome phase they were forced to uh, enter into the cell cycle but uh, though the the the, the dna synthesis will happen more number of cells are in s phase but they completely cannot kind of complete the cell cycle they accumulate a g2m phase they could be going through the, the DNA damage or, you know, like failure at the, like, you know, formation of the furrow, uh, cleavage furrow, cells are undergoing apoptosis. So we, uh, we, we validated these findings of in vitro in, in, in by verifying the, the, the diabetes from the patient's global line. Uh, so through approval, we got the, like, you know, biopsy section from the uh, from the diabetes the patients. We probed for TJ beta 1 and in NICD1, which is not notch interest intracellular domain one. So we found that the excess accumulation of this TGA beta one and NSCD one in the global from diabetic nephropathy patients and a histological analysis suggested that the sporocytes are dropping from the from the globe and they're falling into the uh, into the like uh, urinary space. That's what we noticed in the, in the, in the panel B. You could see in the panel C and D, uh, there's a uh, increased uh, ratio of urinary TJ beta one and creatinine. And also it's a, and also the patients of urinary patients, they should a lot of amount of the urea as we proved with the Western blot in case of D. So what, what, we, what we observed so far uh, in the study, actually these protocytes, which are, which are terminal differentials, uh, they're exposed to the, to the noxious stimuli in diabetic conditions. And one of the, one of the noxious stimuli is excess elevated levels of the growth hormone. And this growth hormone is a TJ beta one, TJ beta one, um, uh, one, one evoke the notch signaling. Um, and you know these uh, these cell become like you know, giant and there is a, there is a, there is a there is a nuclear there is a uh, replication of the DNA and there's a very bulged cells are accumulated there but unfortunately the bulged cells are undergoing about process you could imagine that as I showed earlier so in the blood vessel there are separate the capital fine capillaries in the in the, in the, in the, in the globe they are covered by these protocytes and the protocytes provide the oppose the hydrostatic pressure and that way they filter the small molecules and you know and the glucose and excess small molecules they all come into the urinary space when cells are not there protocytes are not there this glomerular capillary is not uh, uh, not uh, uh, offered a hydrostatic pressure and you know even every molecule that comes into the glomeruli especially protein that comes out and they, they go in the urine that that's nothing but proteinuria uh, I summarize by saying that, you know, probably we are the first uh, laboratory to uh, demonstrate the growth hormone is TJ beta 1, and the growth hormone reacted with the notch signaling in the adult protocytes, though these protocytes, uh, when during the like embryonic stage or during the, you know, the very early life, uh, the notch path is active, but in adult adult, adult uh, protocytes, notch, is, notch should be inactive, notch is represented, but growth hormone reacted with the notch signaling. So by activating notch signaling, growth hormone evoke the cell cycle reentry, but unfortunately they are unable to complete the both the karyokinesis and cytokinesis, and major, majority of the cells are stuck in at the G2M phase, and which 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 induces the mitotic catastrophe. As we showed that you know the the the, the apoptosis pathway is active, and with facts analysis we could show that six percent of cells are you know accumulated uh, uh, like you know, quartile four. Together all these conditions that manifest in the proteinuria. Uh, uh, I sum up with, uh, you know, th saying, you know, my deepest, uh, 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 like, you know, thanks to my heartful thanks to uh, Professor Salim and my students, uh, Raj Kishore and Dhanunjai. Uh, I acknowledge the financial support by the CERB and ICM or India. Uh, I thank the Academy of Excellence in Biosciences for uh, providing the registration. Uh, uh, thank you very much.